So as we make our way through the Messier catalogue of objects, you're probably realising there's a lot of star clusters. Open clusters, globular clusters. Now obviously this creates a slight creative problem for us. We don't want to make the same video over and over again. So in this film about M53, what we're going to do is show you where it is in space, but also use this as an excuse to discuss what's up and what's down when it comes to deep sky objects. This actually arises from an earlier video in which Dr. Gray made this comment. So it's a collection of a few hundred thousand very, very old stars. It's actually underneath our galaxy. Some of you picked up on this and asked a few questions about it, so we had a discussion about it the other day. Today we're going to look at another globular cluster. This one's M53. Globular cluster is a giant ball of very, very old stars orbiting out around the outskirts of our galaxy. I have been reading the comments section, and in a previous video on globular clusters, I talked about globular clusters being above and below our galaxy. And we got the very sensible and very good question, what defines up and down with relation to the galaxy? So I thought I'd use this next globular cluster to illustrate that point. So this is a nice piece of software that I've downloaded. It's free software called Where is M13? That's just the name of it. It's got nothing to do with the actual object M13. Um, but it does what it says on the tin. It tells us where Messier objects are in relation to our galaxy, which is very useful for this project. So what you're seeing here on the left is a, a representation of what we think our galaxy looks like seen from uh, outside. So we have a bulge, central bulge of stars. We have a bar-like feature. We have beautiful spiral arms. And here, in an uncharted backwater, is our solar system and our sun and the Earth. However, of course, this is one view of our galaxy, the Milky Way. But we think our galaxy, at least in terms of the stars and the, and the gas and the dust, is actually very flat. It's a disk. So we're seeing face on in this view, but if we look at this view, we're seeing the same thing, but now flipped on its side. Here's us, here's a, the solar system, about 25,000 light years from the center of the galaxy. So what I'm going to do now is plot the position of all the Messier objects in relation to our galaxy. I'll say show all, and there we go. This is all of, these are all of the Messier objects that are located within or around our own galaxy. And this illustrates something interesting about the catalog. What this shows us is how highly incomplete this catalog is. You would not go to this catalog and say, right, this is a catalog of all the globular clusters in the galaxy. These are the handful of objects that we happen to be able to see from where we are in our vantage point in the galaxy. We have difficulty seeing objects on the other side of the galaxy uh, because the mass of stars and gas and dust that we're looking through is in the way. The Messier catalog is entirely biased towards what we can see here on Earth and what Charles Messier thought was interesting but not a comet, of course. So I am going to click on an object called M53, which is down here. And you can see that in this view, it looks like it's right next door. It appears to be in the next spiral arm over. However, this is really misleading because if we look at the scion view of the galaxy, we now see that this globular cluster is actually one of the most distant Messier objects around our galaxy, and it's located almost directly above us in this view. Above? Hang on. Above? Below? Why are you saying above? This brings us on to the, the actual story of this video, which we'll use this globular cluster to illustrate. How do we determine what's up and down, north and south, when we're talking about the galaxy? Why is that, why is that above? Why is that not below? So now we have to start to orient ourselves, and this gets a little complicated, because we're sitting here on Earth, and the stars appear to rotate around us in the night sky. This is, of course, because the Earth itself is spinning. And so that defines one coordinate system in our sky, the celestial coordinate system. But the Earth is tilted with respect to the plane of the solar system. So there's a plane in which most of the, the planets orbit, actually in this direction around the sun, and our, 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 the axis of our rotation is tilted with respect to that. So that's our second plane of reference. That's the ecliptic plane. Um, but then there's the plane of our galaxy. You might think that there's a nice symmetry here. The Earth is rotating around the Sun in a plane with all the planets. The, the solar system itself 
is orbiting clockwise around the center of our galaxy with a period of about 250 million years. And you might think that the plane of the galaxy and the plane of the solar system are probably aligned. And the fact of the matter is that they're not. They're very misaligned. In fact, the plane of the galaxy and the celestial equator that we get from projecting our own um, equator on Earth up into the sky is actually tilted by 60 degrees. And so, in fact, we're not spinning like a little top around the galaxy in our solar system. We're actually rolling around the galaxy in our solar system. Our solar system is pitched on its side with respect to the plane of the galaxy. So this is the galaxy and this is our solar system. It must make it hard to look at space for you. <laughs> uh, you just have to keep track of your coordinate system and, and know what's what, what's up and what's down. And so these different systems of coordinates all have their different north and south pole. We have the north and south celestial poles, which is where the north and south pole of the Earth point and around which it appears the stars seem to rotate. So then we also have the north and south ecliptic pole, which are at right angles to that plane in which all the planets rotate. And then we have the north and south galactic pole, which is perpendicular to the plane of the galaxies. And so these different north and south pole pairs all have their own coordinates, own locations in the sky. And so it happens to be that the north celestial pole is in the same hemisphere as what we call the north galactic pole. And this was a decision made in 1958 by the International Astronomical Union. And apologies to Brady and all our other Southern Hemisphere viewers, but of course the people who make these decisions tend, have tended historically to have been from the North Hemisphere of the Earth. And so there's a north, Northern bias or a Northern prejudice that says the North Celestial Pole is in the same hemisphere as the North Galactic Pole. And so that's how we can then say this is north and this is south with respect to the galaxy. And that's why our globular cluster M53, we can say, is north of the galaxy. Hang on, you're showing another bias here though. You didn't say north, you said up or above. Who It's not up or above, it's just north, isn't it? It is, and so I will ho hold my hands up and apologize again to our southern viewers. Um, <clears throat> yes, I, I do have that vibe. I am from Canada. Canada is north, and we like to think we're on top. North and south is right, not up and below. North and south is correct, yes. All right. I, I, I will concede that point, you're right. Thank you very much. <laughs>